Hey everybody, Aaron Shea here with Demetra and Dean. They're in from all the way in California for their show today, opening at 6 p.m. here at Habitat. It is so much fun to have an exhibition of their work. They've been working all week long, installing and planning and fighting with UPS. But the moral of the story is that the show has come together and we're excited to share it with you today. I'm going to go through a little housekeeping, then I'm going to turn the floor over to them to talk about their work in the exhibition, which is simply incredible. And like I said, a price list will be available soon, so shoot me an email. And I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Uh, go from there. Boom, boom, boom. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So uh, we do these Zooms every single Saturday at 1 o'clock, usually, if we have something to talk about. Um, if you can't find the link, I sent out a link this week, and it went bad, and I had to resend it out again. For some reason, you can't get it. Just go to our website and click on the Zoom button. that's in the very top of the page. It hits there every week, usually when I put the, new, the newsletter out. So just make sure to check there or email me. I'm happy to send it to you as well. So. Um, like I said, we're celebrating Dean and Demetra's show opening up today, so we'll get to that in a second. We have the date picked out for the Glass Coast Weekend. The plan has come together. It's going to be January 9th through 12th down in Florida. We're getting people who are RSVPing already, and details are going out. We're celebrating with Barbara Bash, doing an auction, having all kinds of fun like we do. This is our 10th year of doing it, give or take a pandemic, believe it or not, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope to see you there down in Florida. Uh yeah, it, we're going to have an ex incredible exhibition, many new artists, and an incredible display. So hope to see you in Florida. Um, Richard Royal will be joining us doing a demonstration, which is he signed up for. And we're going to probably see another demonstration in St. Petersburg as well. We're mixing up the event a bit um, just to make it exciting. So contact me anytime. So without further ado, we sent out some promotion for the show. Uh, it's our first exhibition we've had in a while, probably since our international, which was back in May. And it's been a long time coming, what you say, guys? Yeah. Yes. We've been planning this for a bit. And uh, now that it's here, it's it's amazing to experience and see. And uh, without further ado, I would like to turn over the stage to Demetra and Dean, and they can say hello and then go from there. Are we playing with musical chairs? <laughs> okay. Can I put this yeah, on? Put that, just put one in your ear or do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I want to do this one. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> is there um, a microphone? Or it's on the computer. Oh, it's on the computer. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you for being with us today. And welcome to a tour of our show, Currents of Uncertainty. It's certainly uh, a title that has hit a little bit too close to home in many ways lately, but um, we've been working really hard on the show for a while, and we're excited to share it with you. Button. Press the right button again. You can probably press the right button again. Okay, here's a quick video that'll just take you through the exhibition in the space. And um, the piece that you're looking at right now is called Nature's First Green is Gold. And it's about the, the first sign of, of growth in the springtime. And um, there's always kind of this desire to want to hold on to those moments of growth and hope. And um, it's very precious. And so that's how, you know, the name came to be Nature's First Green is Gold. And the piece is accented with some 24 karat gold on some of the leaves, as you will see. Um, and we really like working with um, creating some holes in the leaves. You know, life isn't perfect. And we, we like to reflect the passage of time and um, growth in the work. Okay, as we uh, kind of move into the, the bigger part of the gallery there, swinging back here, we have another piece actually to the right of this one here, see if the camera goes around. Um, still lingering. So the basis of our work is a metaphor for the human condition and life's sort of uncertainty, hence the title of the show. Um, and Demetra and I have both experienced quite a bit of uncertainty in our lives in, in the last couple of years. And prior to that, you know, the pandemic as well. And so, Everything that we do and that we create in nature is a metaphor for that uncertainty. The, you know, just as though a wind will take the leaves and blow them away and take them in all different directions, uh, such is the same case as that in life. You know, we're always going in multiple directions and fielding all those problems. And with environmental change as well, uh, we're dealing with, you know, a lot of that uncertainty in our world as well as in our own uh, individual lives. And so basically that is sort of the premise of this show and the work that we do uh, collaboratively 
is about those changes and those uncertainties and those twists and those turns that we take in life and the journeys and how we navigate that uh, throughout our existence. And the beauty of nature is sort of what we use is that element to display and show uh, how we navigate and how the ever-changing seasons happen and how we go through that as life, in life. And um, the piece that you're looking at right now, um, well, we just passed that one. So I'll go on to the next, actually. This this is the title piece of the show, Currents of Uncertainty. And as you'll see, kind of goes in the movements of what we see as wind currents or ocean currents. And um, the one sort of constant with all our work is really capturing capturing a moment in time. Um, so it's really freezing move, movement. Um, all, each piece kind of shows life and nature in transition. And um, we use glass as a, a material to sort of communicate the fragility of the human existence. And it also just freeze that moment in time where um, some, something dramatic ha or pivotal has happened in life. And um, with the, these works in particular, we wanted to really call um, to attention the precarious state of the environment um, and this notion of things always kind of, you know, being on the edge of change. And this piece right here is called Glimmer of Hope. Um, we like to use the translucent white glass to really evoke a ethereal um, sense of memory and things that have passed, but the gold is there to also show a glimmer of hope for the future and how precious life is. So um, the other piece that you had seen just prior to that is also from similar series. And right here, you're looking at the vulnerability to endure um, with red being, of course, a sign of vitality and heart. And the title really um, speaking to the fact that as uncomfortable as it can be to, to go through difficult times and to feel weakness, to feel vulnerability, um, it's through those times of vulnerability that you actually are able to dig deep and find the strength to endure them and to get to a better place. So um, we really enjoyed making this piece and Dean does an incredible job. He does all of our design um, design work and I just always, um, I'm excited to see the way everything turns out. This piece, uh, The Intrepid Heart, again, similar vein as to the piece that you just saw. It's really um, speaking to the the persistence of the human spirit. You know, we've, we've all go, gone through challenges and certainly you know, you just pick up the newspaper today and you can see the difficulty that the world is going through. But somehow, you know, we always seem to persist and that's through our relationships in the community, it's through our love of the environment and the things around us and our desire to want to really hang on and, and to persist for a better future. This piece was in a museum exhibit during the pandemic and um, we're happy to have part of it here. We split it into two pieces. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about this? It's called When a Moment Becomes a Memory. Um, yeah, and we use, uh, we always use different leaves for our pieces to kind of express whatever emotions that we're feeling or going through. And this one's more of an earth tone color pattern that we did uh, using catalpa leaves. And like Demetrius just said, it was the a larger piece in the museum exhibit that we decided to deconstruct into two different pieces because of the, the massive size it originally was. And um, this piece yeah. here is called Searching for Solace. Um, again, you know, with the, the nest and the eggs being a sign of renewal and rebirth, the leaves showing the change of the seasons and the holes in the leaves showing the passage of time. Um, someone said to me recently that we remember moments, we don't remember days. And that previous installation that you saw when a moment becomes a memory um, really speaks to the fact of how quickly life can change. It, as much as we wanna hold on to those moments, life is fleeting um, and we do have to be accepting of that sort of um, impermanence of life. But at the same time, there's always, the sun always rises. There's always something new to look forward to in a better future and this, piece right here is called um, The Sun Also Rises um, from a Hemingway poem about just 
the that sort of constant that life will always life will always continue the seasons will always continue and it's sort of this precarious balance or tension between um the rhythm of the seasons and at the same time the notion that amongst that sort of certainty of the seasons there's this unpredictability that that we can't control and that we have to accept and um to be able to have the strength to sort of ride that through this piece is called um, like butterflies chasing sunlight butterflies need sunlight in order to fly and so a lot of our work is about the interconnectedness um, between nature and humankind and the different um, elements within the natural world and this um, piece i just love the sort of delicacy that it evokes and um, really speaks to how fleeting life can be and um, the ginkgo leaf is something that also we love to use in our work because it symbolizes hope and resilience and that's been something that just really speaks to us um, for many reasons, both on a personal level, as well as just looking at um, the changes in the environment and what's happening in the world today. And this piece, um, her memories rush over her like water. It's um, an ephemeral piece and um, the nest being just evocative of times past and, um, you know, those, those early moments in her life. And, there's always going to be certain moments where everything kind of comes rushing back and maybe things that happened in the past suddenly make sense. So, and then this piece, Dean did an incredible job sculpting the ginkgo leaves on this piece. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but they are much, much larger than a, well, there's, <laughs> there's the Aaron's contrast. hand to help us see it's much larger than a, a traditional ginkgo leaf. And I, I think he just did an amazing job sculpting those. Um, and that piece is called As If It Were a Dream, because sometimes with the way that life shifts, we we hope it was a dream because we're dealing with such incredible challenges and we, we're looking for a way to um, to get back to, to the way that things used to be, which is unfortunately something that we cannot do, but we can't always look to a better right. future. And that's what these pieces are about. That final piece on the right is called Tide Pool Reflections. Um, so many transitions of color in this piece. It was really, really difficult to create and um, made it extremely collaborative in terms of my dialogue with Dean and what he needed to design and what I needed to do in terms of coloring the leaves to really give him the palette that he needed to work with. But high pool reflections, you know, we all look in the water and see our reflection looking back at us. And a lot of times it's about the beauty of the moment we're in, but we also are using that to really again, um, show the interconnectedness between humankind and the natural world. Stop sharing the screen. Okay. Over here. Oh, I see. There we go. Gotcha. There we go. Great. All right, well, that wraps it up, guys. Why don't you say goodbye right. to everybody? I'll jump in real quick. Okay. okay, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Thank you, guys. If you have a chance, please come out and visit the show. I think you'll enjoy it. Great. You're free. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for joining me. It's an incredible experience to have the work on display. This is just a taste. We'll put up some more images now that the work's all on display on our website. And if you want, to, again, a price list of the work that's available, contact me. Uh, we have a, a good amount of people who have been inquiring, so it's exciting to see this exhibition actually come together. I hope you all have a great weekend. Next weekend, I will be talking about the Glass Coast Weekend thoroughly, about what the events are going on, what we're, you're expecting to see when you come down and see us down in Florida. I'm being part of Glass History, having high tea with Barbara Bash, all fun things. So thank you all again. Have a great weekend and talk with you soon. Bye. Yeah.